welcome to the third episode of Conscious Awakening. Conscious Awakening. <laughs> there we go. Today, our very special guest is kind of sort of my teacher. <laughs> well, a little bit. Kind of, sort of. But uh, Mr. John Lucio, right? Yes. Look, I don't even know how to say his last name. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so, do you want to tell us a little bit about your background with energy work? I actually started doing energy work about 30 years ago, and I kind of fell into it. It wasn't something that I was looking for. Um, I learned a little bit about energy when I was in massage school. And when you go to massage school, they teach you all different approaches to massage, and some of them are very deep, and some of them are very gentle. And so energy work uh, falls under that category. So there were a couple of different approaches back then that uh, I became aware of. One of them was called Touch for Health, Mm -hmm. uh, and another one was called Polarity, which I didn't really get involved in too much when I was in school. But after I graduated, and then you have, you have to have ongoing education when you're, uh, um, when you're a professional therapist, massage therapist. Mm -hmm. And I saw this class that uh, was in, uh, involved in Polarity, which is an energy-based system. And so I said, well, let me do that because there wasn't anything else that I was interested in at the time. And I just, so I took the class and I found that this was something I was very interested in. It had to do with energy. It had to do with energy balance. So a lot of what spirituality comes out of is the, uh, is the energy approaches that you take. So you are looking at different things like today, the main ones are called Reiki or Seraphim Blueprint, those type of things. Um, but for me, for me, I, I didn't, have, uh, didn't have any knowledge whatsoever of Reiki at that time. It wasn't until 20 years later that I started becoming involved in Reiki, which oh, is wow. the one that's really pre prevalent today. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. the mo po most popular one today. Um, but what it was is it was, it was a system which helped me to feel very balanced, very centered, very clear. And, uh, and then when I would do energy work with my friends, they would also feel the same way, especially when I was going through a lot of uh, my issues at the time, dealing with mm -hmm. my own background and things. And I found that the energy work made me see things more clearly. Mm. Everything was more in, in much more of a positive vein. And so that's how I got involved in doing it. And then about 10 years ago, uh, actually eight years ago, um, almost nine now, I went to my first Reiki session. Mm -hmm. And um, it, was a, a, it was in a small room. There were two tables, uh, massage type tables. There were 10 people. So we split up to a group of five and five. There's a number of different ways to do uh, energy uh, sessions. And uh, we'd have one person on the table and the other four people would be working on them. And we were all doing our own energy approaches, but most of the people there were involved with Reiki. And the, the energy in the room was just popping. I mean, it was just, <laughs> it was, it was just, it was, oh, it was on fire. And it, I was like, whoa, because I'd only really been doing energy work like individually, mm -hmm. like one on one and once in a while with a couple of people. But when, when it got to be like there were 10 people in the room and the energy, everybody was, was doing their energy work. It just, everything just soared. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is the greatest thing in the world. I'm really pumped up. And, um, and then I started going, finding out more and more about Reiki. Then I took my Reiki 1 class and got my attunement with that. And then later on did a Reiki 2 session. But, um, but that was really my introduction into really the high power of energy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we go to uh, the energy circles and you'll get 30 people in the room. Yep, and, that's and where I met you. <laughs> that's where we met. And, and, the, and the energy in there, uh, uh, in, the, in that particular room at the Enchanted Forest can get really intense mm -hmm. and very powerful and so uh, this is something that just I'm drawn to it and the reason the main reason that I really enjoy it the most I mean I enjoy feeling the energy but the reason that I was drawn to it originally and I and it's still very important to me is that it helps the individual that you're working on or the group that you're working on to elevate their consciousness to become tuned in to the power of the universe, to whatever source energy there is out there that we are connected with and helps us each individually to become more powerful and more in tune with ourselves and more in tune with the universe. That's my key to it. That's the key for me. Uh, wait, so hold on, let me talk about like, go off of that. But I actually forgot to introduce where we are. Oh, yes. <laughs> so yes, we right now that. we are on the east side of Las Vegas. If you're watching the video, that you can see the beautiful view of the Strip. 
Um, and yeah, it's literally the end of Lake Mead and just a couple of mountains and we just hopped on one and came up here. So, um, all right, going back to what you said. Um, so why, how can you describe what it feels like to get an energy session or a healing session? Um, how would I describe what it feels like? It's, it's very, it's very, it's individual. It's, yeah. it's so, it so much depends on what you need at the time because my approach is very simply that when I work with someone or will, when I work with a group, I'm interested in bringing to that person that I'm working with at that individual moment, whatever it is that they need. So my concept and my approach is I'm calling on source energy. I'm calling on guides, guardians, protectors to bring you what you need whatever it is that is in your best interest at this point in time. And so I allow spirit mm -hmm. to bring you what you need and to allow you to feel whatever that is. So when I'm working with you or with anyone else, what I'm doing is saying, bring to this person, bring to that person, whatever it is that they need at this particular time, help them to see things clearly, help them to be calm and peaceful, help them to receive uh, awareness, understanding, and to just bring them joy and peace and that's my main focus now a lot of practitioners will look at you and you'll, they'll, they'll talk about balancing your chakras and balancing energies here and there and some people are very very good at picking out at seeing what it is that you need on an individual mm -hmm. basis and they will intentionally work on that specific aspect mm -hmm. my individual approach is spirit knows what you need yeah your mind body spirit in connection with source energy knows whatever you need at this particular point in time and that they will bring that to you mm -hmm. and you will ask for that on a, on a subconscious on an unconscious level and so for me that's the the biggest approach that i would take because i don't want to get in the way yeah myself yeah whereas a lot of practitioners are very interested in reading your aura or reading your reading the energy balances around you and saying okay well you have you have a, a heaviness over here so I'm going to dissipate that and and that's fine because that's what they see and, and energy workers that they're, they're so unique everyone oh. everyone sees things differently yeah. everyone hears things differently mm -hmm. you know so an individual energy worker might might want to work on let's say your heart chakra whereas I might be more concerned with your third eye chakra mm -hmm. so that you can receive information okay and it's a, again it's just such an individual thing now for me for what I used to receive mostly in the past especially when I first started was because I was dealing with issues and, and concerns and so I wanted to understand what was going on with me mm -hmm. all right and so that was a major focus for me at the time. Today, my major focus is simply, you know, help me to elevate myself mentally, spiritually, mm -hmm. okay? So uh, it depends on what the person is looking for. And again, everybody's gonna get something different because they're gonna get whatever it is that they need at that particular time, even if they don't know what it is, mm -hmm. especially if they don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe it's something you're not looking for and that's what you need the most. Exactly. So you ask me, what do you get out of it when you when you have when you receive? So me personally, um, I get tingles. Okay. Uh, so one st one time that uh, John actually did work on me at an energy circle, which is where we met at Enchanted Forest. Mm -hmm. um, the last time he's worked, I think he worked on me three times at the circle. I think so. Every yeah. single time, mm -hmm. uh, I was holding my two crystals, <laughs> and <laughs> yes. I remember he was touching me here like on my on my shoulder side shoulder side i don't know but um it was literally it really felt like lightning was going down my arms and to my crystals because that's what what was I, I was really focusing on for that day just okay. really wanting to connect with the crystals with the crystals okay yeah but um i don't know it's weird sometimes some people they like work on me on my head and then they move on to like another part of my body mm -hmm. and then it still feels like their hands are their here hands are here it's crazy i i tell people all the time uh at when you when you get worked on you might feel two or three sets of hands on you yeah you know it's spirit working on you yeah so you never know um, so to just to build on that uh, I've had people tell me many things about energy um, I've had people tell me the energy was shooting out of their toes 
or they would see these these bright bright lights um, I had a woman tell me one time she said well you just realigned my entire spine vertebrae by vertebrae was I wasn't touching your spine I was you, you realigned <laughs> your like, own I spine wasn't anywhere <laughs> over there. you realigned your own spine mm -hmm. okay and that is part of what what uh, the power is there is a power in this universe far greater than anything I can fully comprehend okay and that power that connection will bring us whatever it is we need at that particular point in time um, I've had uh, I've had people tell me that they went they, they did an astral travel while I was working on them um, it's just everybody's experiences, everyone's different everybody's experience is unique most people will simply feel a peace, a calm, a serenity, mm -hmm. and and they just just feel good about themselves and, and feel like everything's okay in the world, you yeah. know? It, and that's and if that's all there is, I mean that's that's fabulous if yeah. that's what you're getting out of it. You yeah. I I've, I've noticed that whenever I try to think too hard about it, that's when, <laughs> yeah, that's when yeah. you don't really feel as much. Yeah. You just kind of got to be open to it and let it let it happen cuz I've when I first started going to Enchanted Forest uh -huh. a lot and posting about it a lot on Instagram, yeah. I had a few friends actually uh -huh. come and try it for the first time. Yeah. And they're always like, I just feel good. Yeah. Like, I don't know why, don't but know I why. feel relaxed. Don't I feel good. <laughs> I feel like I'm floating. Uh -huh. So I'm like, I just wish that everyone could experience it at least once. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I know there are people out there that are kind of like skeptical. Oh, and, yeah. I mean, and, but if you are skeptical, then... Um, in my in the second a second episode, Monet was like, it's kind of like a door, mm -hmm. like it's not going to be as effective if if you're like trying to come over to somebody's house, but you're not actually letting through, <laughs> letting them get into because, your house. <laughs> because you can block it out. Yeah. At which most people do on an unconscious level, mm -hmm. because that's part of what we're trained at, and in the society is is you know that's that's something that you don't talk about it's something that yeah. you don't think it's about like voodoo yeah. it's like magic oh, and no, so don't don't, do it. Well, don't let it in and um and most people are um you know again subconsciously preventing themselves from receiving mm -hmm. and it's it's very simple you just want to open like you say keep an open mind to it and let yourself receive whatever it is you want there are a number of people that are very skeptical mm -hmm. And most of them will continue to be skeptical, and it's okay if you're skeptical. Be skeptical. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Okay. You know. <laughs> yeah. But um, every once in a while, somebody has an, an eye-opening experience. Mm -hmm. I had a, an experience uh, about a year or so ago now. Uh, a friend of mine that uh, she was going through a lot of issues. She was a lot of. She had a lot of stress and strain and frustrations, and and she was. Uh, agnostic whatever she everything has to be empirical blah, mm -hmm. blah, right and I kept saying I said you know just come over to my place we'll do some energy work it'll just you know help you feel a little better and yeah 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 and then one day she, she was really down she said okay listen I'm gonna come over we'll do some energy work so mm -hmm. she came over to my place and we talked for a little while you could tell she was not feeling her best and, and so then we went into my energy room and we did a session and she came out and completely different feeling completely different presentation her, her mm -hmm. mind her body her her whole aura if you will she was bright she was upbeat she she felt good mm -hmm. all right and she didn't tell me at the time but i found out about, about a week or so later she said when she was on the table she heard a voice Ooh. in her head it said you need to believe in me Aww. i'm like Whoa! <laughs> That's well, nobody, crazy. Ever, nobody ever said that to me. Come on, guys. What about me? <laughs> You're like, come on. What's my message? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and that—that's an extreme case, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you know. yeah. But most, again, most people are just gonna—they're gonna feel good. They—they they don't, and you don't need to know why. Mm -hmm. and, and some things have just happened. Yeah. Just don't question it. Just yeah. let it be. And the more you allow yourself to uh, to be open to it, and the more you go to energy work whatever um, I suggest circles all the time because they're the, they're an easy step to take you go in you meet a bunch of people you sit in a room and people walk around and do energy work on you and and, and I should mention energy work so if I'm working on you basically it's very light touch I might be touching both your shoulders as you said before I might be touching a shoulder and a wrist I might be touching on the top of the head um, but it's very, very light, very gentle. And even sometimes I will work on someone and I'll step 
a foot or two away from them mm -hmm. and let the energy just flow. Mm -hmm. Because spirit knows where to send the energy. You know where to receive the energy, mm -hmm. okay? It seems to work best most of the time when there is a slight connection, but it's not necessary. You can do energy work miles away. Oh yeah. You can do energy work. I've done energy work from other parts of town. I've done energy work out of state. I've done energy work on people 3,000 miles away. I still haven't experienced this. <laughs> okay. I mean, but I believe it. <laughs> okay. And, and a lot of practitioners are good at that. Um, I only do it once in a while. It's not something that is a, a large part of what I do, mm -hmm. but that's an individual thing. Uh, some energy workers will say, okay, well, I don't ever need to even meet you. And you don't, mm -hmm. you know, I've had people say, well, work on my daughter. She's over in such and such a place. I said, well, okay, what, what city is she in? Give me her full name and what city she's in. That's all I need to know. Mm -hmm. And I let spirit do the work. Yeah. And, um, and I have friends that I've worked with and I've done distance with them and they'll tell me, well, I can feel when you started working, I can feel when you stopped. Mm -hmm. So, and, and they're very intuitive too. I mm -hmm. mean, so they're, they're very receptive. So it's not like anybody's just going to be able to feel that. Yeah. You know, be aware of that. But, but again, it's not something that you have to do that they, like there has to be a, uh, a real intense connection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Most of the time it's just a very gentle touch, especially like if you're talking about being in a circle, um, usually you're sitting in a chair, people are walking around behind you and, and doing work on you. And mostly it's just going to be a uh, head and shoulders, something on the arms. Sometimes people will get in front of you, get down and, and work on your ankles or your knees or something. Um, it just depends on the individual practitioners and what they feel they're drawn to do. Mm -hmm. So it's mostly, again, for me, it's the reason I like the circles that we go to is because the practitioners will walk around and just work on this person and work, work on that person. And you're drawn to go to this person or that person. And you don't have to be, you know, it's, it's sometimes you just go down the line, who's ever next. Yeah. And sometimes you stop and go, okay, no, I need to go work on that person right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to know why. I just, you know, I, I, I stop, I, I finish working on the one person and then I'll look up. And then if I'm drawn over there, that's where I go. Mm -hmm. You know, I let spirit guide me. Um, the, the last, actually the last energy circle I was at and you weren't there, um, there were uh, there were a lot of practitioners. Oh yeah, you told me. Okay, yeah. yeah. And so I worked on like, I worked on just two people. And then I, and then I was like, okay, no, I'm not getting drawn to anywhere. So I, I'll back off into, you know, to the side and just let the energy flow and say, okay, let me know where to go next. And, and they said, nope, you go sit down. Oh. Uh, whoa, You're what? Like, me? <laughs> whoa, telling me what to do. No, I'm just kidding. No, because I very rarely, you know, usually I'm just working all the time, but every once in a while at the end of a session, I'll sit down and, and receive, let yeah. someone else work on me. And what was interesting is I got a couple of messages that night from people working on me, and I don't usually get messages. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, and I had a couple of messages that I wasn't happy to hear. So you would always get these things. You're like, you go, damn, you're like, really? All right, okay, do I, I have to? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, okay. You know, we're, 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 I tell people all the time, be open to whatever you receive. So mm -hmm. I have to be open to whatever I receive. Oh yeah. And let it go. Yeah. yeah. Positive or negative. That's it. Either you way, know? you both learn yeah. from it. Well, it's not so much negative as it is. Uh, as sometimes it's like, okay, you know, you, you're trying to do this. You stop trying to do that yeah you know the, yeah. The, I'll give you one of the messages I got it says the, the message came um, you can't save them I know hmm. you can't save them I know <laughs> stop trying oh You're like, okay, <laughs> okay. Right. you know it's like yeah. <laughs> you know so uh, sometimes it's just something you need to hear you know crazy yeah. I when when we did one um, with Eileen uh, what was my message was you're right where you need to be and I was like good all right cool yeah <laughs> that yeah. was like a month ago so I don't know yeah. if it's the same now <laughs> <laughs> and it changes from day to day yeah, month to month changes. or whatever you are you are you're, you're on you're on your path you are uh, you are open you're learning you have mm -hmm. you have a beautiful energy thank which you. I've said to you before okay and you do as well and thank you <laughs> and that's why we're here that's why that's why we're here mutual appreciation yes. society <laughs> but um, you know it's it's like you're allowing yourself to learn things to be open to things to mm -hmm. to receiving the message to understanding and I, I call them 
uh, you know, there's the word epiphany. Oh, yeah. And most people think of it as like an eye-opening event. Yeah. You know? I feel like people expect a lot. They're yeah. like, whoa. Yeah. But epiphanies happen every day. Mm-hmm. They're small. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just little details. I'll be driving down the street and go, oh, yeah, duh. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, that. <laughs> and that's fine. That. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so, like, your, your little message there was mm-hmm. just, it's just an awareness. And that's a good thing. You know, I mean, that's something that we all need to be, to be open to, to allow ourselves to feel. And um, I, I did want to go back to one thing. Because we talk about Enchanted Forest every once in a yes, while. Yes, yes. So we should mention that Enchanted Forest is a location here in Las Vegas yes. where you can go do energy work and, or you receive and go, go to circles or have all kinds of things, you know, find crystals yeah. and things like no, that. No, they're amazing. I go there and have probably, I go there every week now, mm-hmm. once a, at least once a week to go to a yeah. class because they have, literally have hundreds of classes a month. Mm-hmm. So it's really, it's a really awesome place if you want to, you know, get your feet wet with the whole spiritual side of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is what I did, except I took like two classes a week. <laughs> <laughs> you jumped uh, right into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. When I think when you when you came up to me that day when you formally introduced yourself, you're like, "So you're a new regular, huh?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's what you said about yourself. Yeah, when yeah. You sat no, at I, the... <laughs> did, I did, I did, I did. Which I am. I'm a new regular. New regular. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, it's amazing. They're amazing people. Mm-hmm. Like I've gotten to meet a lot of the people that work there mm-hmm. and have helped me along my journey. Mm-hmm. And hopefully they'll be on this podcast yeah. as well. There you go. And it's a place where you can go and just feel the energy. They have lots of things like crystals and books and things like that. Or you can just walk into the back room and, and just some people can just I walk in the back room just sometimes just to feel the energy mm. because it is so powerful in there. Um, and not everybody's aware of that. Not everybody understands that. And there's, uh, you know, there's no pressure. You just go in and you might want to talk to some people and find out about things. Um, I like to, I like to bring people there just to have them, just like you say, to get get a feel, get a sense, mm-hmm. get an understanding. And not everybody's ready. Yeah. Not everybody, you know, because I've talked to many people about, you know, well, about the energy work and what it can do for you and how it makes you feel. And not everybody is comfortable with feeling comfortable. Yeah. I I have actually worked on people and they've gotten very centered, very peaceful, and they didn't like it because they just weren't used to it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't something that they were, were comfortable being. They weren't comfortable being comfortable. Yeah. And so they didn't do it again. Yeah. That's, and that's okay if that's if they're not ready you know this is not something that you say you have to do this there, there are no requirements here mm-hmm. there's no requirements there's no obligations there's lots of opportunities oh yeah lots of possibilities and that's why i love las vegas i i never realized there were so many opportunities here oh until i met people at enchanted forest uh-huh. i met other people like in other shops like karma connection and uh-huh. um I don't know. Las Vegas is just a strange city. There, there are a lot of spiritual workers in Las Vegas. Yeah. It's amazing. That's why, yeah, and I was surprised to hear that. Because yeah. I'm like, Las Vegas, this yeah, yeah. gambling city? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no, it's it's beautiful. And I'm just really glad that I stayed. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know where I would have gone. But people ask me all the time, oh, do you want to stay in Las Vegas? I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, I love living here. There's a lot of good things about Las Vegas that people don't, and, and there's a lot of good things outside. We talked earlier today about, you know, going to places like Zion mm-hmm. and Joshua uh, Tree, Joshua Tree. <laughs> yeah. and you can go over to Red Rock right outside of town or uh, a week or so ago, I was up at the uh, Valley of Fire, just oh, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. I need you know. to go back. Oh, oh yeah. It's so beautiful. Fabulous. There's a lot of really fabulous places around the area and the other thing is you make the most of where you're at Mm -hmm. you find the opportunities that are available to you in your locale and you and you make the most of that and it's what you have to do Mm -hmm. um and and people can sit and complain about oh this town or that town or whatever or you know las vegas is oh this there's so much negativity here well i worked in the casinos for 30 years oh yeah i forgot about that and and i I didn't have a lot of negativity because I'm a very positive person. Mm-hmm. So I was able to deflect away the negative energies. And that's, that's part of what we do as, uh, as energy workers or, and, and 
every individual should do that also, is we put up barriers around ourselves to protect ourselves from those negative energies and to spin them off and mm -hmm. to, to allow ourselves to receive positive energy. Because essentially we all are energy workers. We just, you know, mm -hmm. some of us just haven't tapped into that they yet. Haven't tapped into it, yeah. yeah. Everybody is capable, mm -hmm. you know. Um, when we go, we go to this, the one circle at the end of the circle, everybody says, uh, we ask, is there anyone that wants to send energy to someone that's not here? And then everyone in the circle, all of us, will send energy to that person who will send it to the person there, you know, they want to see the energy go to. And it just takes place. You just, you just have to, you have to just think about it. You it's just set have your to, intention. Yeah, it's just your yeah. intention. Everything is intent. Mm -hmm. Everything is intent. If, if, if my intention is to bring you power and strength and vitality, then that is part of what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of other things too, whatever it is that you need. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's part of the concept is, is bringing the individual person whatever it is that they need at that particular point in time. And um, as I was saying before, you'll go to different practitioners and they will work on specific things because that is what they're drawn to work on or you've asked them to work on. And, uh, but my particular approach again is, you know, I can do Reiki on you, I can do Seraphim Blueprint and I'll use those techniques and I'll use all my old polarity techniques and balance and energy. But basically my focus is, I call on your guides, your guardians, your protectors to bring you whatever it is that you need at this particular point in time. And if they say to me, if, if I'm working on your shoulders and they say, no, move over to, to this spot here, I move over to that spot there. And I, I, they say to me, I, it isn't like they're speaking to me. It's just like, I'm, I'm drawn to, to go mm -hmm. do this, you know? You just feel it. I just, just feel like, like this right, is where I I'm supposed go to go way. next. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll be like, you know, I've been here a long time. Maybe I should go somewhere else. And I go, no, no, no the message, stay no, there. stay right where you're at. Dude, just stop thinking. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't overthink this. You know, just yeah. let it happen. Just let it be. Let it happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually, when I observed you working on Eileen, it was uh -huh. crazy how we were just like, I know oh. it's not every time. It's always yeah. different every time. But you're, oh, you're that like, was the man, moment. you're like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> She was literally laying on the table. Your right hand was like kind of on, over, like hovering over her, but your left hand was like way out here. That <laughs> you was like what? That was a very interesting uh, session. That one, Cause, yeah. Because usually it's hands on. Usually, again, you, and especially when you're working on a table, mm -hmm. because now you can work a system where you go around the entire the entire body, and you start at the head, and then you work on the arm, and you go down to legs, and you know, up the other leg, and then and then you work on the body, and then back to the head. And so everything is, is touch. And that day it was like, I was like about, about as far as away as I am from you. Mm -hmm. I was, I was yeah, like this, I'm like, like, okay. Like, what are you doing, <laughs> man? Am I playing goalie? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you're like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and you, I can feel the energy flow. Mm -hmm. I can feel it move. Um, I, I can feel the, the power. And I say all the time, I, I say, I have the power. It's not my power. It's a connection. Yeah. My specific approach is I want, because you are connected. Mm -hmm. My specific approach is I want to magnify that connection. You're surrounded in the light. I want to magnify the light. I want to call on your guides, your guardians, to magnify the light, to bring you whatever it is that you need, to magnify that connection. Mm -hmm. And that's my approach. So, uh, and again, different people will do it, will work in different ways. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes I just, I just, especially when I'm at the circle, sometimes I just have to step back and just let the energy <laughs> work. Go. Go, let it go because, yeah. because it just builds up so much. Yeah. Um, and, and this is, uh, this is my experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what I'm talking about here is something that I feel, that I sense that I have an awareness of, and I, I make a conscious effort to tune in, to, 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 to have a sense of feeling of, is this right? Is this what is working properly? If when I'm talking to you, I'm trying to get a sense of, is this making sense to me? Is this something that's, um, something that is intuitive, intuitively true 
for, for me. Mm -hmm. And it may be true for you also, but it may not be true for you at all. Mm -hmm. Something that I say may really resonate with you. So if what I say to you makes sense, if I say whatever I say, if it makes sense, you grab hold of it. Mm -hmm. You use it for yourself. If something that I say doesn't make sense to you, you let it go. It, doesn't, it, it's, it has no value to you. It may make sense to you a year from now, 10 years from now, or yeah. it may never make sense to you. Yeah. Or something that I say to you now may say, oh yeah, this, and you, you incorporate that into your life, and five years from now you go, well, that does, that, I don't hold with that anymore. It worked for me then, but it's not working for me for now. now yeah. And so just be open to that. Be open to, the, uh, to go with the flow. Yeah. To let, to let yourself feel what is right for you. At that very moment. At that moment. Yep. What is right for you at the moment. Not what is right for me. It's not my job to tell you what you need to think right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'm here to help you discover things. Yeah. Be open to things. Yeah. 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 And that's why I, I feel like for every single episode I keep saying, and this is why I do the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm not uh -huh. doing it to just, you know, try to force something on people. It's just... It's a way for people to become more aware, become more conscious of these type of, I don't know, just this type of work that's going yep. around. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you believe it, you believe it. You question it, you question it. Yep. You're skeptic, you're skeptic. Cool, just yep. whatever, however you feel, it's just another tool. Exactly. To help people grow, which is why, it's just why I do it. Yep. I keep on saying, yep. I feel like I say the same thing over and over again. So. <laughs> and, and that's okay. It's, it's um, you know, it, it, we all basically are saying the same thing over and over again. Yeah. It's, and for me, it's, and so you say, well, why do you keep doing it? Well, because it keeps working. It's, yeah. it's, it's very strong. And more for me, mostly, I mean, a lot of the reasons I go to the circles are, is that, you know, you're bringing something to people. A lot of people, it's their first time and they don't mm -hmm. really understand it. And you are giving them an opportunity to experience something that has been of great value for me in my life. That's made a huge difference in my life. Oh, oh. Should probably wait for the airplane. We have. Or is oh it? no, that's a that's a truck going by <laughs> oh, on Lake Mead. <laughs> Sorry for all the ambient noise in the back. Uh, we're we, literally off the street. <laughs> yeah, we 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 are in a beautiful place right now. Yes, we are. We are on the east side of the Las Vegas Valley. Yep. We are on what's called Frenchman's Mountain, which French, mo French baby. French. <laughs> <laughs> We're not on the actual mountain. That's right. I think that's going to take like an hour and a half to okay, hike up. Okay, that's it's well, it's actually right over here, and it's huge. It's and literally it's, over here. Yeah, and um, and of course Lake Mead is right there, the street Lake Mead, so the trucks going up and down it. But um, but it's gorgeous out here. It's beautiful, and that, like I said to you, this is the first time I've actually climbed up here. Oh, really? What? You literally live right here. I, I, li I live like a mile away. <laughs> I know. That's crazy. But no, I love this place. Um, if you if you ever want to go sunset gazing, you definitely got to go over here. Oh, yeah. I'm getting a phone call from Raymond. Shout out to Raymond. Uh, sorry, I'm on my podcast right now. <laughs> he's the one that you met at Makers. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. he's definitely... Yeah. You know, he's like, oh, if you need a guinea pig, <laughs> uh, there you go. You know, like, dude, try try energy work on me. But anyways, look, there's a tangent. Yeah, there is a tangent. What were we talking about? <laughs> we were talking about energy work. We we're talking about energy work. Energy work and how it affects you and, and what what do you get out of it? Um, for me, it's a very spiritual experience in the sense that it helps me to connect with with universe, but that's a very ethereal. Mm -hmm. concept it also more importantly it helps me to connect with real life mm -hmm. you know um, oh wait before you, before you go forward I don't remember if I talked about this before but it's a big thing that to note that spirituality and religion are not the same thing no because I, I feel like a lot of my friends have that misconception yes yes because whenever I say something spiritual some of my friends oh then they start talking about God and mm -hmm. I'm like it's not the same um, it's, it's like, you can be spiritual and religious at the same time, but if you're religious, you're not necessarily spiritual, I feel like. Um, Did I explain well, that correctly? I feel like I didn't. You know, <laughs> all right, so for me, and everything, you know, we all look at things our own way. Or mm -hmm. We see things our own way. Um, I was raised Christian, all right? So I was raised with, in a religious background. I, I feel at this point in time, I am much more of a spiritual person 
than I ever was when I was being raised as a Christian. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that a Christian can't be spiritual. Mm -hmm. Many of them are. Yeah. Uh, and but spirituality is an aspect of religion. Religion. So, it, you can be very, very religious and very spiritual. Mm -hmm. You can be very spiritual and not religious at all. Um, what is you have things like Buddhism, mm -hmm. all right, which is not quote religion mm -hmm. per se, like that religion the way we perceive yeah. religion mm -hmm. as Christians. Yeah. It's very different. Yeah. But spirituality is the beauty of spirituality for me is that you can or cannot incorporate religion into it. It does not disassociate from being a religious person. You know, it does not require you to not follow a, a religious doctrine. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it allows you to follow whatever doctrine you believe in. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it is for me. Uh, again, I try not to tell other people, you have to think this way. I, I, you know, whatever you, you come up with what, what is right for you, what your perception is, is. So spirituality, again, to me is a sense of uh, it's a connection with nature. It's a connection with your fellow human being. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, it's not totally an ethereal thing where I'm, I'm oh, wow. You're like, yeah, it's just like floating one, everywhere. You know, you're you know, like, yes, you know, I, I love the sky. Yeah. <laughs> no. Which is fine Which if is, that's I mean, where I you're at sometimes. <laughs> but, you know, that's not where you, well, that's not where I want to be all the time. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, I, I want to go see a hockey game, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I want to go out to dinner. Yeah. You know, Uh the real world, the physical world, is We're a beautiful right thing. Now, yeah. yeah, I mean that's part of why we are in our physical bodies. Mm -hmm. If you if you believe in the concept of we are spiritual beings in a physical body yeah. right now, okay, yeah. which a lot of of spiritual people believe is that we are we are um, we are spirit, and this is just a uh, a period of time that we are in a physical body, mm -hmm. and then we go back to spirit when we're done here. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody believes that. Mm -hmm. Some people believe that we are, uh, that there's in re reincarnation, that we have had many lifetimes, uh, or that we have come from other planets, you know, from other solar systems. Um, Starseed, you were talking about Starseed yep. in the first, in the first po uh, podcast. Yeah. Um, Thanks for listening. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there are many different beliefs, and no one is required to accept any of them. You have to decide for yourself what makes sense to you and this is why part of why i like the spiritual approach because it allows you to make those decisions for yourself mm -hmm. it doesn't require you to have to say you have to follow this and you have to follow that uh, there's nothing wrong in my opinion with again being brought up a certain way and saying these are the these are the structures that you have to follow if that's what you believe in that's fine you know uh, that if that's what works for you then that is your reality mm -hmm. reality that's that is what is right for you in this life and that's that's okay it's not for me to tell anybody else that your way of thinking doesn't work yeah that's or that, is that, wrong that's yeah. not that's not how it's supposed to be no you're supposed to be able to make choices you're supposed to be able to you know that's why you have a mind mm -hmm. you know that you that you see things in a different way and 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 you're going to relate to so many so many people but you're not going to relate to other people mm -hmm. it's just the way it is and i don't believe see i'm right all the time no i'm not <laughs> <laughs> i don't believe that the, my way of thinking is right for everybody mm -hmm. it's it's impossible there are so many different approaches to life and the vast majority of them are valid. I'm not going to say all of them because mm -hmm. some of them are like, well, wait a minute, that's no like, good. Mm, maybe it's a little too much. <laughs> maybe, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't think that I would have been a Nazi back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it's, as I said before, if I say something that makes sense to you, you use it. Mm -hmm. And if I say something that doesn't work for you, well, ignore it it's it's yeah. you know I, i'm not trying to tell you you have to think the way i think or listen to it and then just make your own decisions from it and exactly move on <laughs> exactly yeah so i you know i really do enjoy um the spirituality aspect of it but mostly i enjoy the connection aspect of it 
mm-hmm. you know, like like when we work together. Mm-hmm. All right, so the energy is flowing, and there's there's a there's a spiritual connection, but there's a human connection, mm-hmm. and um, and it's a positive vibration. It's it's an uplifting vibration, and that is what I work towards, um, and that is what my focus is. And so, you know, I said to you before, uh, I got the message, you know, you can't save them, stop trying, uh, because I, you know, when I meet someone that is obviously in need of some balance, Mm -hmm. I kind of start talking about it a little bit. You know, I try not to push it on anybody. Oh, I do that too. Oh my gosh, I do that too. I'm guilty. (laughs) So, and, and, and if they respond, then I'll give them a little bit more. And I, I'm not, I try not to. Like, like I said, I try not to push it on yeah. anybody because for me, it was life changing, mm-hmm. literally emotionally life changing, and that, uh, and mentally and emotionally. That's why I try to inform yeah. people too. It was very life changing for me. Yeah. Very step by step, but, but still it was something I feel like nothing can go wrong once that, once you've changed your mindset and become more aware about energy and all the stuff that I'm talking about. It's just like, life's just good. <laughs> Things fall into place. Yeah, things fall into place. It's amazing. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. But again, not everybody's ready, mm-hmm. and that's okay. If you know, when they're ready, they're ready. But but you give them the opportunity to say, okay, what is this? What is he talking? What what is Reiki? What 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 do I feel? When uh, what am I going to get out of going to a Reiki session? What am I going to get feel uh, if I go to someone that's doing seraphim blueprint or quantum touch or whatever? What, the myriad number of approaches. Oh yeah, the, that, the myriad of modalities. <laughs> of modalities. Yeah, that is, that's fascinating to yeah. me. It's, it's how many different concepts there are, and every one of them works for some people. Mm-hmm. You know, it was the same thing when I was a massage therapist. The, every every people would say, well, what kind of massage should I, should I be going for neuromuscular? Should I be going for rolfing? Oh my God, no, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> what is, I don't even Rolf, know what that is. Rolfing, <laughs> it, 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 it realigns your entire body. Uh, they do some <clears throat> very intense physical work. We can talk you know, about it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah another, that's a different, a whole other thing. But but there are so many different approaches, and the only way you find out what works for you is to try them mm-hmm. you know just that's what i'm doing yeah, right now. <laughs> and you're saying i want to try this and a little bit from column a and a little bit from column b yep. and, you know, and that's what's good it's good because again because the the reason in my mind that there are so many different modalities is because people see things in different ways and people respond to things in different ways um so so if so i might be doing reiki on you and you might be well that's okay and somebody else does seraphim blueprint and you go, wow i really felt that mm-hmm. okay and sometimes it's because of the energy approach and sometimes it's because of the practitioner mm-hmm. sometimes you know sometimes there's somebody that you just connect with i mean yeah. very unfortunately we connect oh yeah okay oh yeah so but how many other people are there that you know that you just you, you don't really feel a really strong connection to like mm-hmm. you see them that yeah I see what they're doing I, I think that's good but it's not something that I feel that I need to do yeah. so so you, you, it's just a question of allowing yourself to to find mm-hmm. what works for you you know it's like people who are athletic some people like to play football some people would rather play basketball mm-hmm. you know uh, we all have different things that we gravitate towards so during the first energy circle that I went to, and you were there, I've, I've only been to three, mm-hmm. and you were there for all three, I believe. Okay. The very first one where we haven't didn't meet formally, I, I kept looking at you. I was like, I feel like there's something. There's something. <laughs> there's something. And then the second energy circle, that's when you came up to me, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, do you want to do energy work on a smaller scale? And then just, you know, just things kept rolling, and now we're here. And so. now we're here. And now we're I don't here. know. I get that feeling whenever I'm at a coffee shop because I always go to coffee, coffee shops, shops. There's somebody there because I love to observe. There's so, usually somebody there that I just keep looking at, and, and I'm just like, I don't know why. There's some kind of there's connection. There's some kind of connection. And you just, you know, you just, I don't know. I, I, I don't question it. I'm just like, all right, cool. Maybe they, maybe they'll be somewhere in my life, or maybe I connected to them in a past life. Because I mean, I believe in that. Mm-hmm. So. She's I've had funny. people tell me that, uh, you know, oh, we were connected in this past life and we, we did this together in this past life. And 
I'm not particularly cognizant of that. I don't disbelieve in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just not something that I've I've ever went, yeah, this is something I really strongly believe in. Yeah. Um, I've never, and I don't, I don't feel a need for myself to, uh, to decide or to figure out whether or not that is valid for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because a lot of people just believe that, that you have one life and that's it. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, if that's what your belief system is, that's fine. Um, but I, I've had a f- few people like it's including an enchanted forest that have said to me, Oh yeah, we were together over in, in this, <laughs> in this the, realm. The, the, how yeah, many exactly. dimensions ago? Yeah. Lifetimes. I mean, and, okay. Um, <laughs> you're like, all right, cool. <laughs> and then move forward. <laughs> and move forward. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm interested in this, this lifetime this physical yeah. lifetime this this lifetime and this you know this energy and this these connections now and where that may or may not lead me in the afterlife i don't know mm-hmm. um i'll deal with that when it happens yeah yeah going <laughs> i love the fact that you said that you do this for connection because mm-hmm. that's one of the big things that i do this now mm-hmm. it's just i don't know when i grew up i always had a lot of different friends Mm-hmm. Okay, I never had one friend group. Where I was just bounced everywhere. And then I realized that I just love connecting all these. Like, they're like pieces to a puzzle. Like, I, okay. oh, I know somebody from this group that would work really well from this friend group when I bring them together. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't know. It's just connection is just a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. And some people just don't realize that connecting with other people can actually help you grow exponentially. Oh, yes. And vice versa. Mm hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's just crazy. Whenever I drive for road trips and I see towns of like five houses, and I'm like, man, these people only know themselves. <laughs> and like, oh, I don't, I don't think I can live in a town like that. No, I, I totally can. Well, maybe I can. It just depends on how I am on a certain time. Yeah. But it, it's just funny. That's Las Vegas is such a small world. I mean, we probably have mutual friends that we don't know about too. Yeah. But yeah, it's amazing that a town this size because there's well over two million people here in las vegas now probably closer to three what yes no way oh yeah i gotta google that later oh you better okay. yes <laughs> yes sorry i'm, I'm <laughs> somebody that likes to google things just to you know double uh, check know. yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. just to double check but two million really yeah i'm pretty sure it's well over two million and and, and maybe closer closer to three at this point in time what the, the heck yeah. i feel like the last time i checked it was only like seven hundred thousand or something like that but maybe that was a while ago Really, seven hundred thousand? Um, no. I've lived here you, you since I've lived here since ninety nine. Since ninety nine. Since nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's been a while. Okay. So okay. I'll, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> Google, check it out. Google check it. Check it out. <laughs> Does that include Henderson? <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, 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 maybe that's maybe it's the valley that I'm thinking. Oh, I just okay. lost Vegas. Well, and also, all right, we were off on a way off on a tangent here, guys. It's okay. okay. All right. Um, if you're talking about the city of Las Vegas, mm-hmm. that does not include where we are right now. Uh, 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 we'll chat later. We'll, we'll chat, chat later. later. We'll but chat. Anyways, later. back back to energy work. <laughs> back to energy so, work. Um, one thing that I brought up in Monet's episode, episode two mm-hmm. was that um, it's really important to for the person to know that this healing is actually self healing. Self healing. Yep self very important yeah i just want to touch that again because i feel like that's that's also a misconception of the the practitioner that's working you that they're doing the healing on you so they talk about faith healers Mm -hmm. they talk about energy healers i believe that we are healers in the sense of we help people to heal themselves Mm -hmm. um again when i'm working with someone my concept is to help them make make a stronger connection mm-hmm. to their source, to source energy, to whatever spirits, guides, whatever that they need, and to bring them whatever it is that they need. And that might be mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, whatever it happens to be. But I am not the healer. Mm-hmm. I am uh, the conduit. I help make the connection. I help magnify the connection. I had... Uh, uh, I was in an energy circle one time um, a number of years ago, and this particular circle, the approach is that the people that come to the circle, when, when they start the energy work, they will ask a specific practitioner to work on them. So instead of like 
four or five different people maybe coming to work on you during the course, you would only have one person work on you. Mm -hmm. So I was working on two people. It was a, a couple in their 50s. It was their first time at an energy circle. Um, and they, you know, they felt very good afterwards. The gentleman came back the next week and said to me, he said, I want to thank you. Uh, I went to the doctors the next day and my blood pressure was normal for the first time in five years. Wow. And I'm like, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. <laughs> you did that for yourself. Yeah. I helped you make that connection, but you healed yourself. That's what you were saying before. Is, yeah. We are not, I, I will not, I cannot cure someone of cancer, mm -hmm. but I can connect someone in a way and they can cure themselves. Mm -hmm. And this, and people go, oh no, that can't happen. Well, yeah, it does happen. Mm -hmm. You know, people have remission just from energy work. And, I, and I'm not saying that you should only do energy work. You should take whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever, yeah. whatever, you need. whatever systems are available to yeah, you. Yeah. You know, whatever, whatever medical systems. But the person themselves are you are your own healer, mm -hmm. and that's and that's always been the case. If your perception is that the person who is working on you is going to assist in that healing, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Because if that's what's going to help you make your connection and accept that connection. Because to me, a lot of times when people do not heal, it is because they have a subconscious block. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know that they're preventing themselves. And and to me, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of what, this is one of my pet issues. Um, because for me, when I was dealing with all my issues and, and subconscious frustrations and angers and whatever way back when, it was when I got in touch with what was going on back here mm -hmm. and understood what, what, was, what I was doing to myself on a subconscious level that I was able to break those bonds and, and move forward. And, and for me, the reason I was able to do that partially was because the energy work was keeping me balanced and keeping me open and aware. And I was allowing third eye awareness, understanding to come through and having those aha moments mm -hmm. and realizations, oh geez, that's what's going on in the back of my head. All right, now I can deal with it. Yeah. And eventually get rid of it. Yeah, accept it and to release Acceptance. it. Acceptance, yeah. Yes, and, and so again, the point being that when you're talking about healing and and allow and helping people to heal they if they're willing to allow themselves to be healed That's then they the will receive yep yes but yes you're absolutely right we are not healers mm -hmm. <laughs> we heal ourselves yeah yes and we give people an opportunity to uh to receive whatever it is that they need mm -hmm. and uh and part of what we do is we also break down the blocks you know, if, if we have that opportunity, if we see if we see or we feel something that is preventing this person from receiving, then we have the opportunity to help dissipate that and give them an opportunity to be more open to receiving. Mm -hmm. But still, sometimes the blocks are there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's why. So our next episode is actually going to be with my friend who does sound therapy. Oh, so, it's so cool. So yes. I'm very excited to have a conversation with Colleen. But mm -hmm. the reason why I love sound is because everything goes through sound <laughs> or sound goes through everything <laughs> I mean everything, yeah. and so even if you do have a block and you're trying to heal yourself mm -hmm. and subconsciously you're like I don't want to do this that sound's still going to go through you mm -hmm. and help heal yourself so. you, you feel the vibration oh yeah, yeah. I it's, totally it's, feel it it's oh, definitely I love interesting sound. yes <laughs> I love sound you're healing. a junkie I am oh a my junkie. gosh I love you you're awesome oh, I love you too man <laughs> I just uh, I just know these past three months have been awesome it's just like i said life's just been good and mm -hmm. it's because i'm allowing my myself to heal and just allowing myself to live life mm -hmm. and not have any you know boundaries or blockages or walls or at least i'm trying not to try not to. i'm really trying not to <laughs> every yeah. now and then yeah yeah and but. so you really are a newbie oh yeah relatively. <laughs> relatively i mean the only thing that i was really into before this whole um big three months mm -hmm. was crystals mm -hmm. i was just always attracted to crystals and the you feel the energy in them yeah 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 that's pretty so, cool yeah now i i'm still learning a lot about crystals but it's something i like to give my friends mm -hmm. and you know have them maybe question it too uh -huh. so 
we're actually at the 54 minute mark oh my gosh yeah it's almost wow. been an hour time flies yeah do you have any last remarks that you want to say about energy work um if anything that we have said has triggered your interest in any way you can look it up on the internet you can go to places around town in your town wherever you happen to be <laughs> and and talk to uh practitioners or people who are involved in things like reiki it's spelled r-e-i-k-i uh seraphim blueprint uh, anything like that just check it out give yourself an opportunity to discover what it might be like. And uh, if possible, go to, a, go to an energy circle. It doesn't have to be a specifically a Reiki circle, but an energy circle where there are practitioners there who are willing to share their time. And usually those are by donation, five, $10, or sometimes they're even for free. Just, just an opportunity to experience the, the power or just the calm and the peace and the serenity. If, that, if that's all you get out of it, if you just feel, you know, I feel good right now. Mm -hmm. I think it's That's best if you have a, a really hard day, too. And you're <laughs> like, man, you know, maybe I should just try this <laughs> and see how you feel after that. Yeah, after that, yeah. Then you can definitely like, can see the, the difference. difference. Yeah, yeah. The difference. Yep. Feel the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for thank, being on here. Thank you. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, John doesn't really have any social media, I believe. So. No, no, no. I, 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 stay, I stay away from, I, you know, yeah. I, I don't do the Facebook thing. Yeah, otherwise am, this would I be... I am on Meetup. Oh, you're nice. <laughs> well, you can find John at Meetup. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, this would be the point where I would say, tell us where you can, we can find you online. Uh, but, you know, we have to skip that part. <laughs> if you go to Enchanted Forest on Meetup... I'm in there under John L. Nice. Okay. And if you go to an uh, Enchanted Forest Energy Circle, you will most likely see John there. Probably will see me there. Yep. Yeah, if you're watching the video, you can probably tell what um, you already know what he looks like. But if you're only listening to the audio, he's uh, he's bald, you know, got a, got a white beard, <laughs> trying, to, trying to describe you a little bit. But mm -hmm. yeah, he's defi definitely unique. I don't know how to, I was like, that, that was my ending. That's your ending? <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. No, thank you. I, awesome. I can't wait to look back at this and be like, man, I learned a lot from him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>